Hello and welcome to Total Health with Dr. Nick, where my purpose is to inspire, empower, and motivate you to live longer, healthier, and more abundant lives. And today, I want to talk to you about Alzheimer's disease. And this is something that will literally break your heart because when you go to visit your loved ones, they don't remember who you are. It's like memories are gone, memories are lost. Other than pictures, you walk into the room, they don't know who you are. They wonder if you're a stranger or not, if you're a caretaker. And this is, like I said, heartbreaking, and it's something that nobody should ever have to go through, but it is something that's becoming very prevalent in our society and around the world. So I wanted to talk to you about it today to let you know if there's anything that can be done with the keto diet or diet in general, because there's a lot of science that's coming out right now. So I want to talk about the science that is showing how we can improve it or even reverse it if we can. But more importantly, to prevent it. This is something you never even want to get. I always say, I don't care if they come up with a cure for cancer, I don't ever want to get it. You know what I mean? And the same thing when it comes to Alzheimer's. I don't ever want to get it. And I'll tell you what, it's starting to concern me a little bit. Well, not really. Um, because I'm starting to get older. I'm going to be 55 this year, so I'm starting to get letters from AARP, and uh, they're starting to remind me that I'm getting a little older. So this is something that I'm always looking out for also. And guys, if you like what we're talking about, please make sure you like, you share, comment, and subscribe, and watch it to the end, because I'm going to give you a lot of information that's very, very important, pertinent, and it'll help you prevent, reverse, or improve Alzheimer's with your loved ones. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Let's talk about some statistics. Alzheimer's, like I said, is just literally, you know, exploding right now. You look at the numbers on it, one in nine Americans have Alzheimer's, and they predict one in three by 2050, about 16 million Americans. And, you know, of course, the numbers are going up around the world also for my out-of-country viewers, too. Sixth highest cause of death in the United States, 5.8 million people in this country, United States, have Alzheimer's and $236 billion in health care costs. So this is not just something that hurts you emotionally, it's starting to hurt us financially too. So there's definitely needs to be something that we can do about this, like I said, to prevent, improve, or even reverse it if we can. I want to show you some interesting numbers right now. This is something that really surprised me, although I had a feeling about it when I started looking up some of these statistics. And that is when this really started to take off. So I went all the way back to 1900. And if you notice, from 1900 to about 1950, it was a relatively flat line. All of a sudden, around 1950, 60, and 70, it started to take off. And there's something that I feel was very important that was going around that time. And that was the war on fats. All of a sudden, fats became vilified. Fats were the enemy. There was something called the six country study done by Ansel Keys. He was one of uh, Dwight Eisenhower advisors. And when Dwight Eisenhower, you, many of you heard me talk about this, had a big heart attack back in the 1950s, all of a sudden the research was going towards fats as being the enemy, fats are bad, start eating your healthy whole grains, and the carbohydrate consumption went up and fats went way, way down. Well, when fats went down around this time, we started to declare a war on fats, that fats were causing heart disease, we started seeing Alzheimer's spiking, all right? Because it has a lot to do with fat, and it has a lot to do with the fat in our brain. Now, I want to talk about a study that was done in the John Hopkins School of Medicine and published in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease. And this study was interesting because they took participants who really didn't want to do the study at all. It was supposed to be a three-month study. They had a lot of people they interviewed over two and a half years, and nobody really wanted to do it because these were 71-year-olds or 70-year-olds that didn't want to have to change their diet. And it was going to be a dramatic change. A lot of them were looking at it like, hey, you know what? I don't have a lot of time left. I just want to eat what I want to eat. And they looked at them and said, no, we have to change your diet. So what they did was they looked at a group and they took some of them and they had them do a high fat keto type diet, very, very low carb. And they had other ones that they just basically said, you know, eat healthy, eat clean, but don't worry about your carbs. There's no limit on carbs. You can have as much as you want. So the keto group kept their carbs initially about 20. Then they let them bump them up a little bit to about 50 grams a day. And the other group, you know, they were having well over 100. In fact, the average American diet is between two to 300 grams of carbs a day. So in this study, it was very interesting. So in a pilot study of 14 adults with mild cognitive problems, basically the beginnings of Alzheimer's disease, they found that a high-fat, low-carbohydrate diet may improve brain function and memory. 
What they also found was that when they forced the body to actually use ketones as a fuel source, and that's really what the study was doing, they were forcing the body into using ketones as a fuel source rather than carbohydrates, they showed much better results. Their memory improved. So even if it was just a little bit, this is something they hadn't seen before. What it also showed was the nine people who adhered to the keto-style diet had small but measurable improvements on standardized tests of memory compared with the five not on a low-fat diet. So, once again, the people who were on the higher-fat diet, the ones who ate more fats, made their bodies forced into using ketones as a fuel source, did much, much better than the ones who just were able to eat whatever they want, keep their carbs up, and really not restrict the carbs, and definitely kept their fats low. Jason Brandt, PhD, professor of psychiatry and behavioral sciences and neurology at John Hopkins University said this, if we can confirm these preliminary findings using dietary changes to mitigate cognitive loss at an early stage dementia would be a real game changer. It's something that 400 plus experimental drugs couldn't do in all the trials. So what they found was just by changing the diet, just by going to a higher fat, lower carb diet, the keto diet, they were able to dramatically change the memory of these individuals much better than if they had used 400 different drugs in different trials that they couldn't even accomplish it with that. So just by changing the diet, it was much better than they could ever accomplish with the drug studies. And this just absolutely amazed them. Now what they concluded was this. Typically, the brain uses glucose as fuel, but in the early stages of Alzheimer's, the brain isn't able to efficiently use glucose as an energy source. Ketones, however, which are formed when carbohydrate ingestion is limited, can be used as an alternative energy source. So what they found was this. In patients who had Alzheimer's, they can't use the glucose as a fuel source. And that was the main problem. What they found, though, is that they could use ketones very easily. So that's why the higher fat, lower carb, keto style diet works so much better for them because they could use the ketones as fuel when their bodies could not burn the glucose as fuel. And this is one of the biggest reasons that your body and your brain need so much fat in a diet because your brain happens to be one of the fattest organs in your body. Your brain is made of about 60% fat. And for those of you who've seen some of my previous uh, videos on cholesterol, 25% of all the cholesterol in your body is in your brain. Now, this is a big problem for people who have high cholesterol, according to their doctors, because this is what happens. You take a statin drug to lower your cholesterol artificially, and next thing you know, you're starting to see signs of either dementia or depression because now you're starting to pull cholesterol right out of your brain. That's a big problem. That's why we see patients, and this is why I always recommend to my patients, not to go on statin drugs, not only because there's so many different side effects, but the statin drugs lower the cholesterol in the body, but it also lowers it in the brain, and then they end up on antidepressants. So guys, this is a big, big thing. You want to avoid the statin drugs, one, because there's so many different side effects, and also, too, I don't really believe cholesterol is a big issue. We need cholesterol for the body. Once again, go back to watch one of my previous videos on the myths about cholesterol. But also, too, it causes brain problems. It causes problems within your brain because your brain is 60% fat and 25% of all the cholesterol in your body is actually in your brain. So, this is really great news when it comes to MCT oil. Why? Because MCT oils convert, convert, to ketones very readily. So if you know someone who's struggling with Alzheimer's, get them to use MCT oils. It's gonna be one of the best things that you can do so that way you can help prevent or reverse the signs of dementia, also the signs of Alzheimer's. So anyway, guys, I hope this is great information for you. I hope I shed some light on some of the misconceptions and also maybe some of the, the the myths that people have about when it comes to Alzheimer's. And hopefully I gave you some better ideas what to do with it, that your body needs healthy fats. You want to have high fat in your diet because your cell membranes are made of fat, your hormones are made of fat, and your brain is made of fat. And like I said, when we started to lower the fats in our diets because we declared a war on fats, next thing you know, we started having more and more brain issues, more and more Alzheimer's, more depression, and all kinds of brain-based disorders. Anyway, guys, 
Like I said, I hope this is great information for you. If it was, please make sure you like, you share, you comment, and subscribe. And thanks again so much for helping support my channel. I love and appreciate you. This is Dr. Nick. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.